Hello and welcome to my Fallout 4 experience. And today, yes, today, we're not going to do any missions. We're going to talk about Fallout 4. Particularly this perk, which is very important. Uh, the secondary option is um, resist more damage and cannot be armed by your attacks. Now, this is relevant also to the settlers. That's why this perk is very, very important. Because uh, I don't know if you've known, but when you have an attack at a settlement, um, you only you can kill the settlers. More often than not, the settlers do not die by attacks. It's only by when you shoot them that they die. Or any area of effect damage from a car you might have blown up. And so that's why that perk is important. And I also wanted to talk about another uh, situation that occurred recently. I was doing memory interrupted, which meant we had to go down to Good Neighbor. So I went down there and I uh, saw the doctor as I had to do, whilst avoiding at all costs uh, Bobby No Nos. Bobby No Nos. Uh, and after I visited Irma, I then went to see Kent, and of course started off the Silver Shroud. Uh, scenario quest and then I realized to my horror that I'd completely mucked up my game but luckily for me I had uh, already completed all the Miller missions uh, it's something I've done this time around is to not to mix up the missions too much so when you start a mission finish the mission so if there's a whole heap of quests that go with it as with the Miller there were 10 uh, different missions and um, so I completed those missions before moving on to Memory Interrupted. And it was only during the Memory Interrupted that I went to see Kent. I'd forgotten what the Silver Shroud uh, quest line does. So basically what the quest line does is it makes you into a murderer. Now if you look at your, um, in your stats section and look under crime and check out how many murders you've done and it will show up basically, or if you haven't murdered anyone. Uh, you know, you've been fired upon, and then well, you can fire at them, and if you kill them, that's not murder. Murder only comes when you kill people that haven't fired upon you. Now, I looked into my section recently, and uh, I saw that I'd murdered two people. Now, there's something I want to say on that. that it was during the Mila missions down at the Mass Bay uh, Medical Center fighting the gunners that I killed Slim, the, uh, the trader. I found him dead. And he could have only have died from me, and it was obviously the, uh, the flamer that killed him. So I've killed him, and I killed another, uh, another settler. It's you know, like area of effect um, sort of thing. You know, they're, they're there. You don't know they're there, but they died. You never, I never found the body. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to mention, the thing about murders uh, is very relevant to the Silver Shroud. With the silver shroud that you become a murderer because it's basically kent that's putting the finger on people he's saying that these people are bad and then you go out and commit the crime which is basically murder so that's why luckily before i saw kent i saved my game that is an essential part to do whenever you do any of these missions before you do any of these missions or start off any of these uh, conversations with people is to do a quick save and then you can return later and undo that bad decision. So, yeah. So I saw a few, YouTube, I looked on YouTube and I saw a few videos that people were like saying that, you know, you should do this mission. But depending on what sort of game you play, I mean, morality is important to me. So what I found out with the, um, the Kent's mission is that it's against morality and then you get, all these things are coming up on your stats, as in murders. So it's very important to, um, to, to save the game before you uh, make any of these decisions. And so, uh, yeah, I thought I'd put that out there, that the Silver Shroud, although it is a quest, it's not necessarily a moral quest, yeah, that's going to do you any favours morally. Because, of course, nobody likes a murderer. Yeah? So remember, before you do any of these quests, save your game first. So here we are, we're at Kent. I saved it. You know, I, uh, I saved the game and so that I could come back and undo it. And that, that's exactly what I did. And so initially, I did the mission at Hubris and I went through and, uh, you know, I got the Silver Shroud 
And I, but after I did the save, I went back to the previous save where I hadn't spoken to Ken. I thought I'd do the Kubris again just to keep the game sort of like consistency up because, of course, the game can get a bit confusing after a while. Some of the saves you won't be able to get rid of. They will, uh, you have to really go back and start again. So I went back to Hubris after I had to re did a research, uh, you know, loaded in a pre before I spoke to Kent. But I'd actually went to Hubris, but I didn't go all the way to the top floor. I only went and got the comic and Gognag's axe and a, a little bit of loot. I didn't go the full, you know, I didn't go all the way upstairs and stuff like that, you know. But I still leveled up. Uh, this is the, uh, the footage of the second time I went back there. So the first mission I've done very, very quickly. You can do this mission in five minutes if you just know exactly where to go. I mean, I've had six characters before this character, so it's inbred. I know which way. It's just there. And the crazy thing is, on the first time I did this mission, I picked up the Silver Shroud uniform. It was only then that it sort of triggered a memory. And then I thought about it longer, a little bit longer, and then I realised, oh, yes, I'm a dear. Oh, no, no, I've done it wrong. You know, I've taken on the Silver Shroud. That's going to make me a murderer. That's going to make me, like, people, like, less... less um, Contrivial towards me, and so uh, yeah. So this is the second version of me doing the mission. I didn't go all the way to the top floor. I didn't get the, um, the silver shroud uh, costume because basically, if you get the silver shroud costume, it stays in your inventory forever until you give it to Kent, and then it gives it back to you, and you become the silver shroud. So uh, my advice to people is to not do the silver shroud mission. I mean, you can go into Hubris and get all the stuff by all means, yeah, you know, but. Um, even if you do get all the stuff, uh, you, know, you could dress up as a silver shroud. I mean, I would like to give the silver shroud outfit to Nick. I mean, he is, if anyone should be the silver shroud, it should be Nick. He is the detective, after all, you know, the, uh, the troubleshooter. Sort of stuff. I mean, he doesn't kill people, well, he probably would, but he probably only kill people with the sole survivor. So that's my advice, is to avoid the silver shroud uh, quest line entirely. So the next thing I want to talk about are these two guys called Art. Now I've come across them twice now and they've been shooting each other and killing each other and uh, the, uh, the synth has killed the human, right? As you can see, uh, he's, he's got no um, synth mode in him. And then of course along comes a, a Deathclaw and kills the synth, yeah? And uh, so that's almost like the game saying, oh no, kill the synth. The game is saying kill the synth. So, how's that work? You know, so I've, I've come across these two guys twice now. The first time was this time where the, uh, the synth killed the human and then the death claw killed the synth. And the second time came along was that the, uh, I tried to kill the synth and then they had them both shooting at me. So I had to run away with the uh, companion because the companion was going to lay them out, uh, as you know, and they do do that. Uh, and so the situation, that's when I thought, well, the game's going a bit awry now. The game's going off on a kill. Like, there's something I've done that's not right, and it's mucked up the game. You know, so this is even before I did the Kent thing. There's, there's obviously, your choices are so um, pernicious in a way, difficult. Um, and I'd just like to point out to keep the consistency is that this, mission, this, was, this all happened before I did the Devil's Due. So obviously uh, the affinity with the Death Claw wasn't, wasn't apparent then. Okay, so pernicious means what I thought it meant. It's, it's basically fatal. If you do something wrong in this game, it can have fatal consequences as the game will get mucked up and then it will start behaving erratically. And that, you don't want that because um, when that happens, then you have to really uh, decide what it is, uh, you know, how you can fix it. It's very, very difficult to fix it. You know, I've had, uh, like I say, I've had, um, I've had six characters. This is my seventh character in this game and I really want to do it right this time. So, you know, with the making choices like not doing the Silver Shroud and other choices that you have to make along the way uh, are difficult, of course. I mean, it is a game and it's about choice at the end of the day. It is only the player's choice which makes things happen. Yeah, so last night I completed the Devil's Due. I went over to the uh, Museum of Witchcraft and uh, I got hold of all the tapes and I went inside and, uh, you know, I got the eggs without killing the death claw. And as you saw, if you saw last night's episode, um, I was there, right there with the death claw and it didn't attack me because it knew ultimately, the game knows ultimately, there's no way that egg's going to make its way back to the nest until, unless the sole survivor takes it there. So unless you initiate that, uh, combat with the death claw, it should actually not kill you. 
uh, that was the scenario that I was playing with the last night, and it, it worked out. Obviously, I used the, uh, the stealth boys to get there and uh, obtain the egg, uh, you know. And so, it's another one of these missions which you... The main part of the mission is deliver it to Wellington so he can make an omelette out of it, right? The side issue of that, the, the secondary mission, is to deliver it back to the nest. That's the moral choice. As I said, I've, I've had six characters. This is the seventh character, and I found out with the six, with the other six characters, well, mainly the last character, six character. Uh, I did it the other way. I returned the egg to the nest, and I found out that that gave me a greater affinity with the death claws. I mean, when you're out in the glowing sea, you want affinity with creatures out there. You definitely want it, you know. And so, if you've returned the um, egg to the nest and you haven't killed, I mean, after this mission, you know. Um, I won't be killing death claws unless I can possibly help it. I will first be trying to whisper them. Uh, that's my priority for that. Um, but I, I will try not to kill them. Now that I've delivered the egg back to the nest, of course, that is the second choice they give you, but that is the moral choice. The immoral choice is to continue with the mission, take it to Wellington, you know, get him to make an omelette. Oh, yeah, you get a re your recipe out of it, but at the, the, big, the bigger picture is surely affinity over what you can get for yourself. So it's a trade-off between what you can actually get for yourself and the moral choice, uh, two separate things, difficult, you know. And so, you know, you won't, you won't always come up with that, um, the reasoning for that will only probably become to from deep thought, thought about it, you know, and uh, working stuff out. But you won't get it straight away. I mean, for, for, character, for people who are just starting this game off, um, there are so many choices to do mission after mission and it all gets very convu convoluted and confused and you know and you don't know where you are because the, the game's gone strange because you've made too many choices the wrong choices or whatever you know it's a great game I've been playing it for years um, you know so yeah there's loads and loads of different um, decisions you can make um, and of course making the right decision is difficult for sure for sure And so, yes, when I was off to deliver the egg, I was rushed by a death claw, and I was ma managed to whisper it, even though uh, the companion had already shot at it, uh, I managed to whisper it, and of course, the thing about whispering is you've got to keep your gun out. As soon as you put your gun away, the whisper effect goes away, so you've got to keep your gun out. I mean, it's annoying to have to keep walking across the map with a gun out. Um, you know, people might say, why have you got your gun out? Because, well, the reason is, I want to keep the whisper going as long as possible. I mean... You know, I mean, within half a mile, perhaps maybe half a mile of a character that's been whispered, um, you keep the gun out and then you can put it away. But like, if you do it within a certain range, uh, the creature will lose its whisper, uh, its affinity. You lose, you lose the affinity. There it is there. It's still there. So I'm keeping the gun out. You know, I've got the gun. The whisper is still in place until I put the gun away or until I'm out of range. And so, yeah, when I was rushed by the death floor and uh, I managed to whisper it, that adds to the belief structure that well, I'm doing the right thing. By, by putting the egg back in the nest, I'm doing the right thing as far as the creature is concerned. And I think the trade-off, the choice between uh, personal gain and morality is a difficult one. But a lot of the companions will harp on about this over and over again, about um, caps, ego, and belief systems. Those are the three things that, gener that, you know, those are the three things that uh, make people do things. And so, yeah, I thought I'd uh, mention that anyway. So, yeah, I wish you well in your game. Making the right choices is always difficult. So I'm running back here. Yeah, there's, the, uh, there's the whispered death claw. It's still there. Yeah. So I've still got my gun out. The, the whisper is still in effect. The affinity is still in effect. And so that is why maybe if I'm making a video, an episode, and you see me running across with my gun out, that is the reason. Now you see there's a creature has run in front of us there. So that dog, it ran across there. Um, you know, it didn't attack us. It was running away, or perhaps it's just playing out whatever the game scenario the game has uh, set for it. You know, I, I, I tried to target the dog, and the dog didn't come up with, uh, you know, that, uh, the target in highlight. It didn't highlight it. So there's something else going on there. Now I know about the other dog, uh, Squeaky, or whatever name you give to it. Um, it's over by the arc jet systems. Uh, I haven't gone near that dog. Uh, I don't want to... The thing about that dog is so cave. 
But of course, what happens is the dog starts defending you. And so, yeah, the thing about the dog is that if the dog is your friend and you're not using vets, you're probably going to end up killing it. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Right. And, you know, and, and if, unless you're using the vets, and that's another thing, I don't like using vets. I like to use uh, real-time um, st strategies rather than the vats because what happens is the vats slows you down and if you've been playing fallout 4 for a long time and you're using vats when you go to a, a real-time shoot up you can't you can't operate you, you find in you say, hang on a minute uh, oh i'm missing vats you know vats slowed everything down and it sort of detracts from your ability to move quickly you know the hand-eye coordination thing goes out the window with vats because you don't have to rely on that anymore you know you've got this uh mechanism it's only relevant in fallout 4 really or any of the fallout games um which slows the, slows the combat down and really detracts from your hand to eye coordination speeds so i thought i'd mention that too because i think it's important that's why i generally do not use the vat system because i i want to keep my hand eye coordination speed where it is now you know um whereas if you use the vats it will detract from um you find out if you try to play a, a real-time combat game like um, Call of Duty or something like that, where you're in a, you know, a multiplayer a universe, you know, you, you will fail unless you're exceptionally uh, exceptional. So, yeah, I thought I'd mention it. So, yeah, the um, returning the egg to the nest is the moral choice in this story, for this mission anyway. So, yeah. Of course, the next moral choice is not to give uh, Mama Murphy any more drugs because she, she's pretty close to dying as it is. I mean, she's asked for... I give her the drugs the first time to get the sight and also for Slim Malone and also to make her the chair. But, I mean, after now, I'm going to try and put her off taking drugs. I mean, that is the moral choice because what happens is, if you've played this before, you know, is that uh, she dies. And so everybody hates you after that. So, you know, if you don't want to do it, you know, make sure you don't give her any more drugs. Uh, thanks for uh, watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed my little talk here. Um, I've just handed in the mission from the Boston Public Library. I love that mission. Uh, I only lost one protector on this one round. Uh, I think I've done it before. I haven't lost any protector ones, but I think the game's gone awry because um, I got there and all the protector ones were already walking around. They were mingling with the super merchants. It's very hard to get a shot off. Um, and so, yeah, so we managed to do that mission. So I'm going to say goodbye for now and uh, hope to see you soon in another video. Bye for now.